Welcome to the panel discussion, Innovative Approaches, Informatics and Big Data to Advance Sustainable Development Goals and Health for All on this day, March 17th, 2023. I invite Holly Shaw from the United Nations to offer comments. Holly, please. Good afternoon. As Dean Delaney indicated, I'm speaking now from the United Nations where we are on the last day of the, of the uh, Commission on the Status of Women, the 67th year. And we have an NGO CSW forum, uh, 700 events in these past two weeks to inform NGO advocates and activists throughout the world. Today, our presentation will include experts who can help us all understand how to use massive information and data in order to advance the sustainable development goals. As an International Council of Nurses representative to the United Nations Civil Society and the Densford Center's active participation as associate members of civil society, we have a robust community that serves to join with other NGOs to plan programs and provide leadership and information to the entire United Nations community. We're hoping that today's program will help accomplish that goal by providing us with new insights and new tools. Dean Delaney. Thank you, Holly. And uh, I want to formally thank you as well as the four other members of the Densford Center Directorate, Shirley Brecken, Siobhan McMahon, Vincent Peters, Teddy Potter, who uh, uh, lead uh, the Catherine Densford International Center and work closely with uh, the United Nations. If we might advance to the next slide. We welcome you our colleagues from around the world, we invite you to a, an, an informal discussion about informatics and big data, but most of all, it's about advancing the health for all people. If we go to the next slide, specifically this panel discussion is focused on com the combination of nursing expertise and education, clinical and informatics to introduce informatics and the use of technology to advance the sustainable development goals. And again, our greatest goal as a community is creating the highest level of health for individuals, families, and communities. I want to remind you on behalf of the panel that uh, please use the Q&A function on your Zoom screen to at any time uh, let us know the questions that or comments that you wish to raise. We will allow at least a half hour as we are together in this uh, two hour time frame to uh, have a conversation and address those questions. If we go to the next slide, our specific objectives that have um, framed our time together today, including a brief introduction to the SDGs, a brief overview of the state of the science information technology, sometimes just referred to as IT, defining informatics and specifically nursing informatics, and the most uh, dominant part of our sharing together is lifting up examples of IT and informatics that do advance the SDGs and also include attention to climate justice, women's health, and women's leadership. Might I introduce the panel? And at this time, if the panel members wish to um, um, uh, uh, open their videos, I would welcome that. We go to the next slide, Tom. We have a beautiful group of people um, that are joining us as in, in the broader community today. As you, you will um, hear more from each one of these people as we go through the formal presentation part I want to identify our global presenters, and you'll see immediately uh, the spanning of expertise and also the, uh, the representation from around the, the globe. Um, Edwin from Liberia, Ernesto, Portugal, 
and, uh, and deeply engaged with the ICNP, Hanei Park uh, from South Korea, Selda, Merva, um, both from Turkey. They joined the University of Minnesota colleagues with whom they have been working. And you'll see um, each one introduce themselves more later. These persons represent members of the Center for Nursing Informatics, the University of Minnesota, and also um, represent collaboration within the ICNP Development Research and Development Center housed at the University of Minnesota. I particularly also want to lift up among the uh, University of Minnesota presenters that we welcome and deeply embrace those who do not hold formal nurse licensure, but are in nursing and lift up our wonderful expertise um, together in an interprofessional environment. And then might we advance, thank you each of the panel members and to all of you, you will see each of these persons um, more. As we move into this time together, might we reaffirm what we're all committed to? I won't read through these, but I will pick out key phrases. Our commitment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Our commitment to the highest level of health for all individuals, families, and community. Our identifying and committing to the fact that we do live in a technological world and we welcome partnering such that the wisdom of this science can truly serve humanity and advance the SDGs. And we work together. We also work together, not only in nursing, but interdisciplinary. Uh, we use an interdisciplinary approach to maximize this dance, if you will, um, with the technology, our education, our clinical service, and also our science. We are committed to women's health, women's leadership, and our essential role in impacting uh, climate justice. And on this point, we do recognize the power of the ability of informatics and living in, if you might say, in the technological world to lift up the visibility, the power, and the impact of women. And uh, this, of course, very much resonates with Norma Lang's uh, long time, many decades, key statement that we must name it in order to actually be able to do something with it and have visibility both within nursing and um, the, the impact on care. And we are committed to the equity, access, and quality of care across all continua transitions and diverse settings for all people of the world. With that as a background, we will move into, and we will move rather fast, uh, we will move to the next si slide. This reminds us that as we um, proceed now in sharing thoughts and experiences, we have four objectives. The first one, introducing the SDGs. Holly, if I might welcome you back to provide comments uh, about the SDGs. Certainly. Thank you. The SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals were unanimously endorsed by the General Assembly of the United Nations in 2015 as the Millennium Development Goals were expiring. There are 17 goals, part of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. And among the 17 goals are 169 targets, all designed to target specific areas that together will advance the quality of life to all peoples of the world, all nations, and our planet. Nurses daily demonstrate the expertise, wisdom, insight, and judgment that we believe will help to achieve the SDGs by 2030. And today we'll discuss one approach to doing that, which is involving information technology in the hope that all people of all nations will eventually close the gap 
of the digital divide and we'll all be able to use these tools to attain the 17 SDGs. Thank you very much, Holly and Tom, if we might advance the slides. Next, we'd like to present just a few comments related to overview of the state of science of information technology, which pervades all of our environments. If we might go to the next slide. Information technology is the collection of tools that make, us, make it possible for us to access, use, and all sorts of other activities with information, data, knowledge, there are a couple aspects of information technology we want to lift up to convey that in all of our lives, sometimes with our control and influence, and sometimes not, our lives are pervaded with technologies, actual and an ongoing list of emergency emerging technologies. So the internet of things is one way that we rather keep track of that, if you will, and you're seeing a couple pictures from that, but you can see introduced in 1999 and now in 2021, over almost 22 billion active connected devices in the world today. And almost 12 billion of those are categorized under the internet of things. So basically there are more devices that relate to the internet of things and have relationship to the social determinants of health in the world than non-internet of things devices. You can see they range from ordinary everyday living, no matter where we're at, uh, to very sophisticated tools. It is important for us to know that every one of these components has a unique identifier and therefore they can transmit data without the assistance of you and me. Some examples follow whether it ranges from connected cars to security systems, to how it is that we shop in some areas, healthcare monitoring, connected cities, et cetera. Let's move to the next slide. slide. And there's more to the picture, much more. We're just presenting some examples. And the, the information technology goes beyond the internet of things. So on this, slide, you see examples of other categories and areas uh, that um, give more detail on information technology. And um, a couple I want to lift up because you'll hear more about them today, artificial intelligence, which is beginning to, um, to very much um, uh, pervade healthcare as it does uh, much of our societies, computational science, and of course, the data and informatics, virtual reality, the importance of human factors, and um, we're um, all very engaged in mobile compute, com com uh, computing. So again, so again, when we think about um, this area of technology, pervasive. Um, the mobile technologies have been um, very instrumental in connecting the world, no matter where you're at. If we now go to the next slide, I'd like to transition then from sustainable development goals, this pervasiveness in technology all the way from inside our homes and how we individually interact and connect in the world to the area of informatics. We'll go to the next slide. And I'd like to ask uh, Robin um, to do a brief overview utilizing these three definitions of informatics. Robin? Great, thank you so much and happy to be here. I'll be providing some um, definitions for nursing informatics specifically and how that relates to the work that we'll be sharing in more detail. And the first definition, actually the first two are slightly similar. They're both from the, uh, one is from the International Medical Informatics Association and the other one is um, complimentary from the American Medical Informatics Association. And it's defined as nursing informatics science and practice integrates nursing 
its information and knowledge and their management with information and communi communication technologies to promote, excuse me, to promote the health of people, families, and communities worldwide. This really is the heart of what we do for informatics within nursing as well. And the last definition is from the American Nurses Association scope and standards that was just released in 2022. And the nursing informatics is a specialty that integrates nursing science with multiple information and analytical sciences to define, identify, manage and communicate data, information, knowledge, and wisdom in nursing practice. And with that, I'll turn it back. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. And uh, as Robin has shared, there were several comments that she made in highlighting pieces of these different definitions that I'd like to just pull out. And a call to us in nursing, um, uh, if I might say, the wisdom uh, that women bring to this uh, integration of health. She um, highlighted that it's part of our work to address ultimately the health of all people worldwide. There's an emphasis particularly in these definitions on the importance of wisdom. Wisdom doesn't automatically come with technology and it doesn't automatically come with the data information or knowledge. Wisdom comes from us. If we go to the next slide, you can tell now that we're transitioning from the first three objectives into the primary objective for our time together today that addresses examples. And the examples are meant to say, why should I pay attention to this anyway? Why is it important in my own life, my professional life, or the world of nursing and the world of the United Nations? So as we transition, I ask you just to pause, maybe for just the next 30 seconds, and intentionally look at the icons representing the Sustainable Development Goals, all 17 of them. And imagine then in your own life, the intersection of Internet of Things, technology, information technology, and informatics. So I'm going to pause for just a few seconds for you to have time to bring these worlds together. Sustainable Development Goals, Technology, Informatics, including your wisdom. As we transition now, I would draw your attention to sustainable development goal number 17. This panel comes to you today as just a very um, uh, uh, brief uh, illustration of how we all work together in partnership for these goals. And in the world of informatics, we all work together in bringing the informatics expertise in bringing the, ex the informatics expertise um, to bear. We will move on now to the next slide. And now we're going to start the part where each one of our panel members um, will describe examples of IT and informatics and examples of how those areas that they have been working together in partnership on actually advance the SDGs, including climate justice, women's health, and women's leadership. So let's move to the next slide. In this one, again, emphasizing it's all done in partnership. If we move to the next slide, we want to focus on such a fundamental 
necessity, one might say, to capture what it is that nursing um, addresses, does outcomes. And we do that through nursing terminologies that basically help us in a very organized way describe nursing judgments, treatments, and nursing sentence of patient outcomes. There has been so much work done for decades across the world on developing these terminologies. You see several examples here. And again, these examples are deployed in various places throughout um, the world. Today, we're going to have an example later on the Omaha system. For right now, we want to focus on the ICNP, the International Classification for Nursing Practice. And I asked two of my um, uh, partners, Ernesto and Panier, to join um, in this part. If we go to the next slide, I'm going to first uh, turn over the comments to you, Ernesto, Ernesto, and then um, in describing the ICNP, Panier, please offer comments as you wish. And both of these persons will also provide examples on the implementation and the outcomes of the ICNP. Ernesto? Dr. Connie Delaney, thank you for this uh, invitation. And I'm really pleased he, to be here uh, involved in this quest to try to contribute in my own way for the advancing of uh, SDGs and health for all. I'm, uh, I'm a nurse, I'm a teacher of nursing. I'm a researcher at Nursing School of Porto in Portugal. And I'm here in, on behalf of the ICNP editorial board uh, and the ICNP centers that are represented uh, there. Uh, one of them is, of course, the, the center where I'm at now. Um, like it was said by, by Professor Delaney, um, ICN uh, established a vision uh, uh, many years ago in 1989 to establish a common language to describe nursing care that could be somehow compared uh, across settings, across time, across populations and across uh, borders, allowing at the same time uh, a cross mapping with other uh, existing and recognized nursing uh, classifications. Uh, of course, at that time and maybe today also, there is a there was a lack of evidence about the value of the, the, the profession and the need to take a seat at the health policy table. And and like uh, Dr. Delaney said already today, uh, that was a time when Norma Lang correctly stated that if we cannot name it, we cannot uh, finance it, practice it, teach it, or uh, put it in the public uh, policy. And in what about uh, 1991, ICN established and initiated this long term uh, project uh, of um, um, building an international classification uh, for nursing uh, practice. Um, at, the, at the, this time, I can share with you the, the one one example of the, the of the national implementation of ICNP of this uh, classification. Uh, that was the the process that we had here in my country in Portugal, where we passed by from the. the what existed at that time that was a free text uh, nursing documentation to a structured nursing uh, system that was uh, at that time developed uh, with the, the, the partnership of uh, the IT department of the Portuguese Ministry of Health. And then we uh, started to use ICNP in a daily basis in uh, hospitals and health centers throughout uh, the country. And this uh, was a, a process that started only with uh, 60 nurses. Uh, then we replicated this process to in health centers, allowing the first um, experience of interoperability between hospitals and uh, health centers. And this was a huge achievement, and it was really accept, uh, well accepted by uh, the community of, of nurses and even the community of uh, health professionals, other professionals, uh, because it allowed also a reflection about nursing care uh, and about the, this uh, gap between what we think uh, we are, what we say we are, and what we uh, really, really are. Um, 
In about 2007, uh, ICNP was adopted by our National Nurses Association as the standard nursing classification to be used in all nursing information systems since uh, that, uh, that date. And uh, today, more than 90% of Portuguese nurses uh, use the same system based on the same standardized language that is uh, ICNP. As you know, in 2012, uh, WHO accepted ICNP within the, the, the family international uh, classifications. Uh, and um, with this, uh, it came to, to give uh, uh, more visibility to, to the role of nursing and the, pos the potential of using nursing information in the healthcare uh, settings to, uh, to allow some decisions at central level and, and the national and international level. In our point of view, this availability of, of data uh, helps us to, to represent better the nursing knowledge, uh, to consolidate, for instance, the objects of studies, of research, uh, and, and, to, and, and it also helps uh, to, to, um, to uh, strengthen the, the informatics literacy of nurses. It was really important for that also. Um, it, it helps us to, in the decision-making process. It helps us to clarify the autonomous dimension of, uh, of our uh, profession, uh, increasing the patient safety, using the same language in the same uh, in, the, in all settings, using this language, which also helps us to build quality indicators for the continuous improvement of, uh, of quality. And of course, it gave us uh, visibility to the society, uh, a professional affirmation between peers also, and of course, we believe some policy impact also at, uh, at national level. Um, as you can imagine, uh, throughout these years, uh, nurses in Portugal document millions of data items in this information system using ICNP. But like I used to say, we only we, we can only use big data if you can rely on the accuracy of the bedside data. Uh, so we must have consistent data collection at bedside. Um, like I say also, COVID-19 pandemic highlighted this urgent need of the electronic health records to be interoperable at international level. And this is a huge challenge that we face uh, today. So we have the technology, we have the, 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 the means, we, we only need to clarify the core of our uh, of nursing to clarify uh, and to, to, uh, to comply with some requirements that we have today of uh, interoperability of the, the, the information. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the technology is, is there. Uh, by now, uh, in our opinion, using a terminology is not enough. We have to move on to other uh, constructions, to, to, to the use of uh, ontologies and so on. But uh, by now, what we think is that working together, we can achieve uh, these, uh, these goals, like uh, Dr. Delaney stated. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Dr. Delaney. Thank you. And we'll welcome Hanae Park. Hi, um, I'm Anne Park from Korean ICMP Center. I am a proud alumnus of University of Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Um, since Ernesto introduced ICN and ICMP, I will just uh, right, jump into right into Korean uh, implementation experience. Our experience in Korea is very similar to what just Ernesto described. Uh, in Korea, we first implemented ICMP in 2003 at Seoul National University Bundang Hospital as a part of an enterprise-wide electronic health record system. The approach we took is that uh, we first collected nursing narratives from nursing documentation in the paper form and the nursing practice guidelines, and we standardized them. We then mapped a uh, concept we identified in the standardized statement to ICMP. If there is no ICMP concept available to describe concept we identified in the nursing statement, we added new concept to ICMP. So we created a uh, extended Korean ICMP. We then um, created nursing catalogs. You might call this 
a tailored subset of nursing statement for common or specific patient problems to help nurses document nursing care using ICMP in a more easy way, you know. So at the end, um, we use the ICMP to populate or create nursing statement describing nursing assessment, nursing diagnosis, goals, nursing interventions, and the nursing outcomes. And just like uh, Ernesto mentioned, the Korean government adopted the ICMP as one of um, standard terminologies in Korea, along with the SNOMED CT, you know, other types of um, uh, standard terminology in healthcare. Now I would like to um, highlight some examples how we used data collected from this uh, standard terminology-based um, electronic nursing record systems. Because we have data, you know, coming from um, standard terminology-based uh, system, it was uh, possible for us to conduct various researches. We studied quality and the quantity of nursing documentation before and after uh, ICMP implementation, we found that nurses tend to document uh, in a more structured way following nursing processes, and nurse, nurses tend to document in a more detailed, granular um, data. And we also able to study gaps between required nursing care time based on patient classification and actual nursing care time based on nursing staffing level. We found that pediatric and geriatric units are understaffed and need more staffing level. So all these things possible because we have used standard terminology. We also studied practice variations for preventive pressure ulcer by patient characteristics and by nursing char nurse characteristics. And we found some differences in um, practice depending on patient characteristics and uh, nurses characteristics. We also able to study adverse direct event of patient treated with the different types of um, medications we were able to estimate incidences of adverse reactions and things like that. And uh, we, using data, we, this is the highest point, okay. We developed the patient safety risk prediction models and the clinical decision support system for accidental falls, pressure ulcer and unplanned extubations. And we were able to measure outcomes such as how much time spent, on nursing activities and quality and quantity of nursing documentation and a number of patient safety event occurred, you know, before and after we implemented this uh, system. And nurses tend to um, spend less time on the risk assessment because we provided clinical disease support system and they spend more time on actual activities. And nurses documented more risk factor specific preventive activities rather than just documenting general activities. And uh, in terms of uh, number of safety events, we found there are some um, decrease in the um, falls and in pressure ulcers and the things like that. So once we use the standard terminology based system, there are so much we could do to improve nursing care and um, practice through research. And thank you. Thank you, Hane. And uh, I want to thank both you and um, Ernesto for um, the partners you've created within your countries, mm -hmm. the partnerships that you join internationally. And if we can go to the next slide, as both Hane and Ernesto noted, they um, have. ICNP research and development centers within their countries. The countries that have ICNP research and development centers are listed here for your further reference. 
As I was listening to, to both of you, I was reminded that although in this presentation, we do not focus on the education implications for what we're talking about today, I want to plant that thought in all of your and our minds on the implications that this um, SDGs, informatics and technology um, interrelationship has for how we um, educate our next generation of nurses. Let's move to the next slide. So now I welcome uh, Robin Austin and team. Robin? Great, thank you so much. And I'll welcome my colleagues to um, share their videos as well if, as, as we can. And we're happy to share our work related to the Omaha system. And specifically this work will be addressing um, social, Sustainable Development Goal number three and also 17 are partnerships. If we could please advance to the next slide. Great, thank you so much. So again, we talk about our using our standardized terminology, the Omaha system, and specifically we're going to be addressing this work in the research that examines women's health and maternal and child health. You can see the schema of the Omaha system on the right-hand side. Um, and we are proud to have this have the Omaha System Partnership and Data Collaborative that contributes to the health and well-being and advancing the health of women and children. Through our research, and also we're working with our, our colleague and researcher, Dr. Karen Munson, through her research using the Omaha System, she was able to identify and um, showcase that nursing home visits had significantly contributed to the positive health improvements and health outcomes um, and reduced health disparities. In addition, through this work, she's also been able to identify social determinants of health within documentation as well. So, you know, that's a big, big part of, um, of what we're talking about with, with sustainable development goals and also health outcomes. Through the use of our research um, and using standardized terminologies, as, as noted before, we're able to share have shareable and comparable data across health settings, but also this has been broadly, um, widely accepted within our international partners as well, which we'll hear about in just a moment. But in addition to having shareable comparable data, we're also to, to broadly share our health outcomes. And this also helps us to continue to develop and generate new evidence around nursing, um, nursing outcomes and nursing health interventions. Further, this allows us to enable and provide some of the personalized care that nurses do as we continue to generate additional evidence to support the outcomes that nurses have. Lastly, we're, um, this work has led us to wonderful collaborations with our international partners, our Netherlands colleagues, which are not with us today, but we have our Turkey colleagues. Also understanding and how enhancing how nurses make a difference across the globe. So I'll invite our colleagues to share a few of their comments using the Omaha system within Turkey. Thank you, Robin. Uh, I'm Selda Seçkinli, uh, and I'm very delighted to be here. Thank you for this uh, great invita invitation to be here. Uh, I'm a professor at Istanbul University, uh, Florence Nightingale Nursing Faculty at Public Health Nursing Department. And uh, since 2000, uh, I and my team uh, have focused on integrating the OMA system into the uh, public health nursing curriculum at both uh, baccalaureate, master and doctorate level uh, to identify a holistic standardized nursing terminology uh, for public health nursing assessment, intervention and evaluation. And I teach uh, the Omaha system in several uh, courses in my faculty, including public health nursing, nursing informatics, and community-based nursing informatics at both uh, all levels in uh, nursing uh, education in my faculty. And I'm leading the University of Istanbul Jarapasha scientific team of the Omaha System Partnership for uh, Knowledge and uh, Discovery and Healthcare Quality. And I have uh, completed uh, several uh, research uh, studies within this uh, partnership. And um, I, uh, until 2021, uh, the, uh, I and my colleague Merve, uh, she's also with us here, uh, are the member of the International My Strengths My Health Research Group, and uh, we have adapted the uh, My Stretch My Health app, uh, which is a whole person strengths based consumer facing mobile application uh, designed for individuals, families, and communities uh, to self identify uh, strength, challenges, and needs in Turkish. And uh, thank you uh, for uh, this great collaboration uh, again to both uh, Karen Manson and Robin. Uh, thank you.
Thank you so much. Merve, would you like to say a few words as well? Thank you. I work, I'm working with Salda Seçkinli and we are together many uh, studies and she is, she said uh, our studies and contribution the uh, almost them. and I can say specifically also we uh, recently we have recently a study about uh, a woman uh, we examine the relationship between other adverse childhood experiences and nutrition and physical activity behaviors using the OMA system. And we found that uh, adverse childhood experiences uh, was significantly as associated with nutrition. Uh, we detect we using uh, the OMA system. Uh, we detected uh, nutrition is uh, most important uh, predictor for adverse childhood experiences in women, and um, also uh, we and now we are conducted a study uh, aimed to define community strength in COVID nineteen using my strength my health application. Uh, we are conducted with Robin and Salda and Karen Monson. And uh, that's all. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, uh, thank you. Thank you both. And thank you for being here. That's been a wonderful collaboration. We're happy to share our work related to Omaha system research um, as well. So I will turn it back over to Dean Delaney. Thank you. We thank you very much. Uh, for highlighting examples of, uh, of, I'm going to say particularly, um, using the Omaha system to improve women and children's health, as well as other work that I know you have going on. Now we'll transition to Dorcas Kunkel, please, and team. We'll go to the next slide, Tom. Hi, um, I'm so very glad to be with you today. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, and, uh, various uh, activities that we have done in Liberia, West Africa. Um, and um, we concentrated on SDG 3, Good Health and Wellbeing, Quality Education, which is SDG 4. And again, um, partnerships for, for the goals because nothing can be done in um, low resource countries without partnerships. And in fact, nothing can be done anywhere without partnerships. And um, could you go to the next slide, please? So um, I have been involved in um, working with uh, a nursing education in Liberia and West Africa since about 2010, um, began as a sort of a, a post-Civil War initiative to um, rebuild the nursing workforce um, after the Civil War. So my um, my uh, tenure there in terms of, of being assistive or being a partner um, has been um, over 10 years. And Dr. Edwin Bayen, who is not uh, with us today, but has partnered with me uh, considerably, was a student of, graduate student of mine now, a doctorally prepared and um, a leader in the country. And I know that he uh, is sorry that he can't be here. Um, so uh, we, we um, over time, have uh, determined, um, well, we've, we've con contributed a great deal to the rebu rebuilding of the healthcare nursing workforce and to um, enhance um, leadership for nursing educators and are now able to move on and think a little bit more about um, health equity and how we can address health equity in the country. And Liberia itself is a, is a very low resource country with a primary health care system and a desire to uh, establish a universal health care system um, over time. Currently, in the, the most current data that um, is uh, provided for physicians and, um, and primary care providers is below one per 1,000 people. So it's reported out, this is 2015 data, um, which is the most current data at below 1, 000, uh, one, uh, below one per 1,000 people. So we have been looking with our partners um, 
to see how we can um, enhance the primary care workforce. So our, our, we um, applied for an SDG grant and we're uh, provided that through the University of Minnesota. And we are working on um, uh, an assessment uh, for nurse practitioners to see what type of curriculum might best uh, fit the context of this very low resource country. Oh, um, I'm glad to see that Dr. Ban has joined us. Dr. Ban, may you turn your mic on, please? And I will uh, pass over to you shortly. Um, so again, um, speaking of the SDG grant, we're working at building a, a curriculum for nurse practitioners and advanced practice nurses. Currently, there are no um, advanced practice nurses working in the country at the nurse practitioner level. Again, it's a primary health care system. Um, so um, everyone works within that primary health care system. For example, uh, it, as in provinces in Canada and other um, primary health care countries. Uh, the pro our approach is at the health systems level le leadership um, space and we're focused on a national advanced practice nursing curricula. And then the competencies that we are looking at and we're assessing them now to meet the context of the, of the um, healthcare workforce and the um, country indicators. Um, and we're doing that together uh, with um, the Ministry of Health, the um, chief nursing officer of the country and with the Liberian Nursing and Midwifery um, a Registrar. Um, there's a monumental need to develop appropriately prepared educators to teach in graduate level programs um, who also have digital health informatics preparation. Um, and I would like to call on um, Dr. Bayon to describe uh, the use of technology in uh, nursing settings um, the, in, a general, in a general way across the country. So oh, Dr. Bayon, right. and, and if you could turn your camera on, that would be great too. Thank you. Okay. I hope my camera is going to be clear for you to see me, everybody. Uh, yes, like thank you. Like she said already, um, okay. Like she said already, my name is um, Edwin Pian. I was in the first cohort, again, like Dr. Uh, uh, Conker said, um, master program, she taught me. And we have been trying to partner together on a number of occasions on uh, research project. This has been to be uh, one of them. So she was talking about health informatics in Liberia. As many of you already know, Liberia is a very uh, poor country. Uh, we are lacking in a number of things. Um, computer, internet, uh, information technology, and all of that uh, being included. We got a very few uh, hospitals. Again, let me be quick first to say that um, all of our clients have major hospital and uh, primary and uh, secondary hospital. But part of the challenges we have been having have been the issue of uh, technology, even if the institution, the hospital has um, the technology. Uh, electricity uh, could be a very major problem for this technology to be utilized. But there are a couple of hospitals in Liberia that use health care informatics. Uh, GFK Hospital, for example, uh, does the government new me hospital, uh, Tapeta is in Tapeta Hospital is in Niba County, and a couple of hospitals, ENWA, uh, Keller Hospital, all of these uh, have used technology when it comes to healthcare. But we are moving and we are getting there to ensure that uh, we really going to improve in healthcare informatics. Uh, but it is now being an easier one, as everyone could know, 
looking at our technology and, and, and so forth and so on. Uh, but again, like um, Dr. Conker said, we are working on a family that's practitioner curriculum. That is going to be the very first one in Liberia. Uh, she helped with the curriculum and I've been trying to where we're for because we want the curriculum to be something that is evidence informed. So yes, we are working on that. Again, like I said, it's going to be the very first one uh, in my country. So Thank you. over to, yeah. Thank you, Edwin. Could we have the next slide, please? So um, again, our current work is, um, is funded by the uh, uh, SDG research grant for the Global Programs and um, uh, Strategy Alliance, and we can do a lot with uh, this amount of money in a, a low-resource country. Um, again, our partners are Dr. Edwin Bayan, Ms. Mrs. Cecilia Pongbalaplomo, and Mrs. Diana Sarte, and uh, she is the CNO uh, at the Ministry of Health. And our Rationale for this work is to just ad address the monumental shortage of primary care providers in Liberia who can meet the needs of the population living in this context. Um, so we will uh, we will move to the next slide now. So we concentrated our, our work and we had to identify SDG targets. And SDG targets um, were easy to, to select but thinking about indicators, how we could show that nurse, nursing impact on these indicators is really a challenge within the Liberian context because there is no um, a, a national standardized nursing terminology that is being utilized in the primary health care settings at this time. So um, uh, just uh, I will just mention a few things that I've noticed and then I will pass it to Dr. Bayan to maybe describe these more fully. But so there are most of the documentation in almost every setting, except for the few that he has mentioned, are um, written on paper format. Uh, most of the time, what I have seen in my own um, in my own observations are nursing notes that are written in a, you know, in a just a text format, and I do not see them often used for anything other than that they've been documented and people move on from there. Um, uh, their usage, maybe you could address that, um, Edwin. And then um, again, nothing is, um, there are no nursing terminology incorpor incorporated like ICNP. So that is something we are hoping to integrate into our curriculum um, um, as we move along. And we're learning about how we might do that. We're still at the very learning stage. And then um, I have seen um, various workers inputting data from paper forms into Excel spreadsheets, but not in any standardized format. So this is a, I think this is a low income country problem and issue, you know, across the globe. Um, we're just showing, showcasing it to you um, from the Liberian setting, which um, is is quite low resource. Um, although everyone does have a device and potentially um, applications and small devices could be used so long as there was enough electricity or the um, access to electricity in some way, including solar. Um, but I just throw that out there. Uh, so I'm just passing this back to you, Edwin, then to address these things in, in a little bit more um, detail as a nurse who has practiced in the setting. Okay, uh, Dr. you are quite correct. Uh, the issue of uh, nursing technology is not something like in my country, like say we have tried to quench and then use, you know, in our, our own setting to be contextualized. What is being done here most often is what we just adapt, you know, from, from the U.S., most often from the U.S., no kind of technology people use, you know, for so familiar with, we try to just, you know, use them. I'm an, I'm, I'm an educator, you know, so most time I'm going to speak from both ends as a clinician because I worked as a clinician for a little over 10 years. Um, 
also over 10 years now. So at least I got a little bit of understanding from both spectrum. So um, let's say term terminology, we just borrow from, from the US, US and try to uh, uh, use them. And most time, even with the nurses note, because I we hear all talk about nurses note, sometimes people just don't really um, give a clearer picture, right, of the patient. I hear somebody say um, the patient had a comfortable night, and then I'm asking, what do you call comfortable night? How do you know that this patient had a comfortable night? So the issue of nurses note the issue of terminology uh, um, has got to be very very huge you know you know one um conference and then some i was talking about research and what i could hear him say was that uh african leaders i'm so sorry i have to just quote him like that african leaders are not really interested in um research and I think I believe that quite well, okay? Because if we are doing research, we should be able to understand why uh, we don't have our own nursing terminology. And then we would like to also find out what are, uh, nurses are really making accurate nurses note on patient shares that when the next person takes over, um, they should be able to get a clearer picture uh, of, of the patient. The issue of technology to use, again, I just said that this is a matter of repetition. Uh, issue of technology is a problem for us to use, uh, have informatics. Maybe uh, the next generation of our nurses will be a little bit more open with technology. I've just heard that um, they have what people call a digital native and digital immigrants. Those of us who are the digital immigrants may not really be so familiar with this technology. So the young folks that are coming up who are the, um, the digital native, they're probably going to really you know, get more involved in uh, healthcare informatics, you know, to uh, cater, you know, to our patient. But there are a number of hospitals now that I getting involved in the use of uh, healthcare informatics that are named already. And some of these hospitals or institutions are more or less uh, donor funded, you know, and that makes it a little bit much better uh, for them. So what to you, Dr. Right, could we have the next slide, please? So our, tar our targets, um, the, the SDG targets that we used um, have dates on them. Um, and I highlighted these dates just to show that some of the dates are in the past. And I think it may be um, related to, uh, maybe related to COVID and just maybe related to other things uh, that the, um, the target 4. 4. B uh, to substantially expand globally the number of scholarships available to developing countries, in particular the least developed countries, small island developing states and African countries for enrollment in higher education. They, the need is for funding for those uh, scholarships and so forth. And they just have not been there in the uh, quantity to really make a good impact on informatics uh, yet. Could we have the next slide, please? I also wanted to mention, and just for the uh, sake of time, um, we are using the PEPA framework diagram, which has been used for nurse practitioners across many primary healthcare settings and other healthcare settings as well. Um, we're utilizing this for our framework for the nurse practitioner curriculum that we're um, incorporating, and it does it, it does have space and place for nursing informatics and standardized nursing terminologies and so forth. Um, and um, lastly, um, the one of the provinces in Canada has offered us their NP entry to practice curriculum that we can use, uh, and we are we're permitted to um, and because it is a primary healthcare country, um, it's 
it's a built out in a in in that sort of standard, um, and uh, we're uh, uh, permitted to modify that um, for this particular context. And so there'll be more on this as we move along. And thank you very much, Edwin, uh, Dr. Bion, for um, joining us here today. Um, that is concludes our portion of the presentation. So we pass this to Priya now. Thank you, Dorcas. Uh, next slide, please. So in this part, I'll touch upon a couple of um, sustainable development goals, one related to good health and well-being, and the next related to reduced inequalities. Next slide, please. So this slide specifically focuses on public health. Um, as we heard in the earlier part of the presentations, right? Informatics offers like so many tools, techniques, and methodologies which can be used to address the SDGs. This one specifically talks about facilitating electronic data exchanges across many different stakeholders for data-driven decision-making. As the COVID pandemic highlighted, um, data and information systems are of critical importance in public health surveillance. Public health receives its data from providers and numerous other sources for its surveillance purposes. As the figure in the slide shows, right, a provider reports to public health uh, on many different um, um, infectious disease conditions and other reportable conditions. Likewise, public health also collects its data from all the healthcare providers and also from numerous other sources and aggregates it for um, surveillance needs. And all of these data come in like various forms, formats, and modalities ranging from, you know, people sometimes lift up the phone to report to public health. Sometimes reports comes in faxes, Excel files, like, you know, RedCap um, based data entry, web based data entry and so on. So the role of informatics is essentially to use technology to facilitate this electronic movement of data. Why? So that the data can move much more faster so that people get data in a timely fashion. People get data that is more complete and also data that is much more granular, which can be used for effective decision making. And also the goal is to move data in a standardized format, both the format of the data and also the protocol for moving the data so that there is less amount spent on like kind of mapping and like reformatting the data and so on. Eventually, this is very, very important because the resultant data can be used in public health for influencing programs and policies, which in turn will impact health outcomes. Right? Some of the example projects like, like, what do we mean by electronic movement of data? Right? Some of the example projects in public health are, we can use informatics to electronically report vaccinations in real time automatically from the point of vaccination delivery over to immunization registries in public health. That's the first bullet listed in the slide. And the second one being, we can also use informatics to electronically access the vaccination profile of an individual from an immunization registry hosted in public health directly at the point of care in clinical settings, which means like before I go in to get my shot, the, my provider can actually look at my prior vaccinations. He or she can also look at the vaccines being recommended so that when I'm there, I can get my shots and be caught up on my preventive care. Informatics can also be used for electronic reporting of infectious diseases, for example, like COVID, automatically through either lab testing or through like um, actual reporting of cases onto public health for population health surveillance. I mean, all of these tools and techniques are not unique to the US and these are like standardized data formats and protocols which can be used in any setting and any country. So I just want to reiterate that. And with that, I'm gonna pass on the baton over to my colleague, Christy Martin. Thanks. Thank you so much, Priya. Hello, everyone. As Priya said, my name is Christy Martin. And the research database and approach that I'm presenting today most align, next slide, please, with the sustainable development goals circled here. So, number three, good health and well being. Number five, gender equality. Number 10, reduced inequalities. And then, of course, number 17, partnerships for the goals. Next slide, please. 
The big data repository I'm talking about is the Minnesota Student Survey, which is an anonymous statewide survey administered to 5th, 8th, 9th, and 11th graders every three years. In 2019, over 170,000 schools participated. The Minnesota Student Survey has approximately 150 questions and asks students various health-related behavioral questions covering risk and protective factors to understand Minnesota youth's unhealthy and healthy behaviors. The assets-oriented questions that address protective factors, for example, cover the supportive aspects of one's life or healthy behaviors that reduce or mitigate risk. For my assets-oriented public health nursing dissertation research, I used the Minnesota Student Survey to complete a secondary data analysis exploring obesity-related behaviors and weight status among Latinx or Hispanic 9th and 11th graders. I also explored two additional protective factors, family caring and family country of origin. Findings of my dissertation research showed that family caring is protective against having overweight or obesity in Latina females. The Minnesota Student Survey Working Group is led by individuals here at the University of Minnesota and includes an interdisciplinary group of researchers. Since publishing my dissertation work, I have continued collaborating with working group members on various research projects. You can see some of the topics of these projects listed here. We have explored weight-based bullying and physical activity among female adolescents. We have investigated protective factors against emotional distress among transgender or gender diverse Latinx adolescents. And we have explored school-related factors and physical activity in adolescent Latina females. This collaborative work has helped us better understand the health and well being of Minnesota youth and subgroup populations. In conclusion, I'd like to emphasize how an informatics approach like this might be used in national and international settings. Similar research approaches can be used anywhere in the world where there exists a big data repository. To advance toward a the Sustainable Development Goals, I encourage nurse and informatics researchers to consider exploring health-related behaviors and outcomes within the context of both risk and protective factors. Thank you for your attention, and I now welcome Dr. Martin Michalowski. Hi, thank you, Christy. Um, my name is Martin Michalowski. I'm a professor here in the School of Nursing. If you could Please go to the next slide, uh, next one. So uh, I'm going to uh, take on the task of trying to talk about art artificial intelligence in a single slide. So we're gonna start very, very high level and, and try to um, kind of focus in on a few specific examples. And being a computer scientist by training um, and an academic, I think it's important that we actually start with uh, a definition. I think. Uh, you know, for those who don't work in the area of artificial intelligence or AI, as I'll call it from now on, um, it's not um, exactly clear what AI is. And I think um, th there are many different definitions. I think I'll just use kind of one that is fairly well accepted, which is that AI is a machine that shows behavior that we would consider intelligent. And that's very broad, and I and I think that's important to note because AI is a concept that covers many other disciplines. So uh, I get asked frequently, like, you know, is AI robotics? Well, robotics is a part of AI. Uh, is AI machine learning? Well, machine learning is is an aspect of AI, as are you know natural language processing, uh, automated reasoning, knowledge representation, which has been talked about. Uh, and many other uh, components that make up this really broad uh, topic. And I think, you know, it, it, it's important to, to view AI as really a big thing. And there's a lot that happens um, under its umbrella. It's also really important to note that 
AI itself is not new. Uh, the term AI was actually coined at a very famous computer science meeting in Dartmouth in 1956. So we're, we're talking about something that's been around for uh, almost 70 years at this point. Um, but I think what's important and why it's, it's gained so much uh, attention, uh, both from a public perspective, but also from a, a research, and as I'll get into in a little bit, health perspective, is that, you know, uh, it's being used at a scale and the resources available to, uh, to apply it are uh, at such a scale now that we can use it in really new and innovative ways. And because of the breadth of AI and everything that it covers, uh, it really does touch every aspect of human life. And I think uh, as much as, as we, we know where it impacts our lives, it probably impacts it just as much in ways that we aren't familiar with. Um, and and, and to, in my biased opinion, but I think in, in an opinion that's shared um, fairly universally, uh, you know, the prevalence of, of AI will simply continue growing as we innovate from a, a computational perspective, a methodological perspective, a theoretical perspective and an application perspective. So, you know, in my attempt to distill things down to a slide, you know, I, I would like to say, and there have been uh, a few very interesting um, manuscripts published on this topic is that AI really can help achieve all SDGs in, in different ways and in very meaningful ways. But the reason we're here today is to focus on uh, those that pertain to human health. So I'll kind of touch upon uh, three, um, three here, but this is definitely uh, not in any way meant to be, or, or really it's impossible to be exhaustive. And then given the, the incredible reach and um, prevalence of AI in society and, in, and specifically in, in health, I think that none of this work can be done in isolation. I think uh, how some of my colleagues have presented today work that you know is not done in a silo. It's all done as part of a, a large collaboration and, and specific to me and many others, uh, these collaborations are, are international in nature. And I think as AI grows and becomes e an even more important and ingrained part of life, but uh, a more ingrained part of uh, the delivery of care. I think all of these um, international perspectives and even you know just different perspectives, I would say, are really important um, to address many of the issues that are now arising as AI becomes um, more involved in, in everyday health decision-making, um, uh, disease management and other areas. And I just list two here, for example, you know, addressing bias and, and equity and uh, availability of these um, of these applications of, of a very powerful tool um, to improve patient outcomes. So to take this very high view and bring it down, you know, to a slightly more specific level, um, nursing informatics in itself is is an area that really is prime to use AI to both improve the delivery care, but really ultimately all of our goals are to improve patient outcomes. So make, um, uh, make people's lives better. Uh, and nurses as a profession, and, and I've, I've worked in this area for about seven years now, are really at the forefront for um, designing, developing, and, and implementing many of these um, tools, um, AI tools, methodologies, and, and approaches uh, into practice and into care. And, you know, as, as any academic would do, I'll just highlight two of my own research in this area that, as I said, is very collaborative and is very international in nature. And these are just two uh, of many examples of how um, AI is being used in informatics and specifically nursing informatics. The first is, is uh, to improve clinical decision support. So enable care providers, whether they're nurses, um, primary care physicians, or, or really anybody uh, to make better decisions around um, treatment of patients. And my focus specifically is on uh, multimorbid patients. So those who suffer from, uh, from uh, two or more diseases concurrently and really um, 
AI and specifically automated reasoning and knowledge representation in this space allows us to uh, implement evidence-based practice in a safe and um, optimized way uh, in the sense, you know, accounting for uh, the availability of resources, patient preferences, um, and many other factors to determine the most appropriate course of care for a multimorbid patient. And another example too is, you know, there, there's a lot of research in, involving AI and developing better treatments, better uh, medication, but really, unless a, a patient is engaged in their care uh, and understands why they are um, uh, prescribed certain medications or, or under certain, um, uh, you know, uh, certain interventions, it's been shown that the, the most effective way to improve patient outcomes is actually to improve their adherence to, um, to their treatment, not in developing new drugs or, or new treatments. So, uh, again, in this space with many colleagues across uh, multiple continents, we work on uh, mHealth, which are uh, mobile technology-based uh, techniques to um, engage patients in their care, to educate them about their care, uh, with the hope that uh, are likely to adhere to um, uh, to the treatments that they've been prescribed and and ultimately uh, produce better outcomes for them. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you. And I pass it back to Connie. Thank you very much, Martin. And if we might now um, go to the next slide. Well, one of our colleagues, Jenna Marquard, is unable to be with us today. She brings a phenomenal um, expertise in the area of consumer health informatics. Uh, consumer can be patients, families, communities, can be nurses and other healthcare professionals. If we go to the next slide, Jenna is focusing on two of the SDGs as examples. Number three, good health and well-being, and 10, reduced inequalities. She specifically focuses on how we work together to, you, to engage user-centered design of de devices ma uh, matched with the data to actually advance health. You'll note on her slide, the topic areas on the left, she's focused in HIV and AIDS and medication taking uh, regimes, processes, she has crossed several diverse populations. You see many listed. The key points that she would like to share with you today include the importance of so many of, whether it is the, the medications or the interventions that we prescribe, if you will, we ask patients, families, and communities to do, the HIV medication being just one example how incredibly important it is um, for patients, families, and communities to do these things. And it also being, if you will, an easy part of their life. So creating devices that actually fit in our lives and actually support our healthy behaviors are key. Her team, which is an interdisciplinary team. And if I might say, Jenna is an engineer and uh, phenomenally does magnificent work as we've said in nursing. Her team has received a number of funding for their work that involves creating a hardware software system that can address common things in our practice, such as reminders, or again, tracking medication intake, or providing visual feedback that will help patients and clinicians um, comply or adhere to the treatment plans. And the key element in all of what her team does is that these systems be not intrusive. 
As I mentioned before, they very much follow a user-centered design process, which you can see outlined here, and uh, as one means and core means to ensure that the system is usable and it's usable, useful, but most importantly, it's usable to that end user. What you immediately see is that team's advancement of working with the people that will use what is envisioned. Devices. She also consistently highlights that some design elements might be universal for many, many systems. Things like that would be different design elements that are very familiar in the devices that many of you, uh, devices you and I use, and others might be very specific to a specific situation, like displaying medication names and types. So again, on behalf of Jenna, we lift up briefly this area, it's extremely important, on the voice of the people, the people using the devices, being a part of from the thought through the early design testing and actual use. And she lifts up that the, the user-centered design of devices is applicable across the breadth of healthcare and across the breadth of diverse populations. So we thank Jenna for sharing these ideas, although she could not be with us today. And we are going to move on now, if we might go to the next slide, to pause for a moment. The first part of the pause is a reminder that we welcome your questions and comments. You will see on the Zoom screen the Q&A section. Please share your questions. We do have some, and we welcome many more. If I might share um, also that if all of the panel members would um, share their video, I want to highlight that in summary again, what this panel has highlighted is the importance of the dance, if you will, or the integration of technology, informatics, and the sustainable development goals. We've highlighted many examples, but this is actually just a brief breath, if you will, um, uh, within the massive world of work that's already being done. We've lifted up the importance of vocabularies, We've shared that there are many vocabularies that are available that have been, if you will, have been evaluated, are, are available for local to international use. We've listed those on a slide. We've highlighted examples of the use of the Omaha system and the ICNP. We've particularly highlighted the ICNP Research and Development Centers as another potent example of working in full partnership across our countries. We've lifted up examples of equity and universal health coverage, public health, statewide health survey and the health of the youth and the importance of that data. We've lifted up artificial intelligence and consumer health informatics. And we ended with user design devices to support health. So now as we will go to the next slide to again remind us why we're here, to learn and engage in full partnership to advance the 17 sustainable development goals. We invite your questions. And if I might, um, there are several that are in the queue and I'm going to ask the panel to respond to these, I will do it in the order they were received. So the first question is, for the presentations on the ICNP, is standardized terminology use 
for only narrative notes, or is it embedded in the EHR? And I know Hane and Ernesto, you both- Can I go first? Sure, Hane. Okay. Um, thank you for the question. It, it is very much embedded in uh, electronic medical record system. And uh, we use ICMP to describe data item and values for that data item coming from structured documentation or semi-structured documentation and unstructured documentation. Uh, the only reason we tend to focus on describing how we use the ICMP to describe nursing narrative is that because that's really complicated, you know, because we need to combine more than one concept to describe nursing narratives. You know, also I think because we do um, use nursing narratives more than um, structured or semi semi structured um, documentation in nursing. I think that's why we really focus on um, nursing narratives when we talk about ICMP. Especially ICMP is a kind of a we call it reference terminology that you could use to um, populate uh, long phrases or sentences by combining um, ICMP concepts. So it is really um, well. Uh, what, what, what is the right term? Fit to um, use as a reference terminology, and so, and because by doing by doing this, uh, we really allow nurse users to use a friendly expression that they are used to using in a nursing documentation. So, to the um, answer to your question, yes, it is embedded in electronic medical record system. We focus on nursing narratives because it is complicated. Thank you. Thank you, Hane. Ernesto, would you like to add comments as well? If I may add something. Uh, in another perspective, uh, uh, I would like to emphasize that, uh, uh, like I said in our previous experience, we started from the free text to uh, uh, a structured nursing uh, system. And at the time that we used the free text, we, uh, we started to understand, to make an analysis of the content of the free text of the narrative records, to understand if there were some similarities in, in the terms, in the contents. And then we started to map it with ICMP. Only after this process, we start, we built the nursing information system in uh, in uh, in informatic in informatic uh, uh, format. Just to say that we have different experiences around the world. We have different contexts and different needs of information, and we hear today uh, some experiences where uh, gathering some uh, these these tools is really hard. So just to understand that if you want to use some uh, any classification, not only ICNP, you can do it by starting to uh, identify these commonalities between the, the the nursing records that people state in their in their uh, narrative records, and then start to build sentences. In our in our uh, experience, we uh, got to the conclusion that all the hundreds of narratives records were uh, stated in twenty seven only 27 sentences. Uh, all that we did was 90% of our uh, interventions and our nursing diagnosis were uh, stated in 27 sentences. And this was a huge step to uh, uh, harmonize our language here in Portugal by using ICNP. But only after this process, we start to use uh, an information system, uh, an electronic information system. Thank you. Ernesto, thank you for those comments. I particularly want to highlight um, doing that discernment work of what's been, if you will, written, and then um, coming to the results that you did is a, is a powerful example of how together there are times when we can decrease the workload on nurses and yet have vibrant um, data. Thank you. I want to highlight um, Dan Passion is on. Dan, um, um, thank you for being present. And also Dan has shared uh, with us in the Q&A, Dan has shared um, uh, two very 
powerful resources. We are capturing those. And again, when the link uh, is sent out for this uh, presentation, along with the um, with the recording and um, and actually the slides, we will um, add those. And then Dan, you pose a question that I'd like to um, um, share with the panel for um, their reflection. The question is, how might progress be accelerated if we talked more about collective impact, which includes in advances, or one might say transcends the notion of partnership? Does anyone uh, want to share comments about that? Sure, I can speak to that, Connie. Great. I think um, I think that's a valid point. I think what's important, and at least you know, quite a few of us try to highlight here that if it wasn't obvious, a lot of this work is um, interdisciplinary and interprofessional. Uh, I don't think that we as informaticists or as computer scientists um, should be working uh, within our own spaces. I think not only perspectives, but expertise and um, subsequently impact is much broader when um, many disciplines are brought together. So not sure if that's exactly what Dan means, but partnership, I agree, is important. But I think um, Kind of reaching out um, across domains of research and, and implementation is is equally important. And there are you know approaches to systems level thinking uh, out there that many people adopt as well when when considering how to deploy some of these solutions. So looking at the impact that you know a predictive model, for example, has on the system as a whole versus only on the population that it's targeted for. So. Uh, I agree with the comment, and I think it's important to, you know, we work at very low levels typically, but I think it's always important to keep the the the, the broader um, goal uh, in mind throughout. Honey, may I contribute here? Absolutely, Holly. Um, I'm uh, at the United Nations. I may have to leave in a moment for another session, but that's specifically what we at the UN are trying to do is to make not only local changes, but systems level interventions. And following the Commission on the Status of Women today, uh, which is a mandated yearly commission, the outcome document that's been assembled will be introduced into the General Assembly and hopefully passed as a resolution. That will then serve as a template in some extent to the um, meeting in May of the Science, Technology, and Innovation Program. And will also feed into the SDG Summit, which occurs in September. So taking all of the information that we're acquiring as well as refined steps to meet these targets, will be hopefully reflected in the UN system. We just found out today that on April 27th, it's going to be the International Day for Girls and IT. And there are a host of programs um, that are going to represent global, a global movement encouraging girls and young women to pursue science, technology, engineering, art, and math and how to use immediate digital skills to help protect our planet and all peoples. The registration for that event will begin on March 24th and it's clearly a universal global event. I could certainly describe many um, of these events, but the UN represents a system that is trying to make global change as well as local. That's why we think nurses are really important because people like Dr. Pasut need to be involved in making these contributions to the system. Thank you so much, Holly. And of course, um, you know we're we're all endorsing your comments very much, not just in talk, but in actual in actual action. And as you were talking, um, 
Dan added an additional comment, which we will be sure, by the way, to share with everyone. And that is to um, remind us to orient ourselves as well to the UN. that's been raised by one. The question is, how could social ecological factors, access to, um, uh, to collective decision-making that gives water, sanitation, clean air, et cetera, et cetera, we could say the earth, soil, planetary health, how can that be integrated into data for SG? SDG 316 and others. So uh, this is a beautiful question I'll offer out to the panel and and then on the on the follow up to it, uh, more, more uh, additional precise questions about we've been talking about healthcare and we look at all these other SDG, SDGs and uh, how does informatics and nursing, if you will, in in, integrated together, how do we impact the the additional SDGs? So, does anyone want to comment on collective decision making, data relevance to water, sanitation, clean air, our earth, etc.? Just, I might just suggest that um, next. Uh, the week of March 20th is the water conference at the UN. And on March 23rd, we have a very important side event that really connects global citizenship and the responsibility for action among all peoples with specifically water. And one of our students at the School of Nursing, a doctoral student um, is going to be involved in that side event which will be virtual as well as in person. And a lot of information I think will be distributed during the what we call the water conference. I can make that link available too. Thank you, Holly. And if I might lift up just to build on your comments, Holly, you mentioned the, um, the doctor of nursing practice student and team and working with you and um, and Professor Teddy Potter and others. Uh, that is an energetic potent pathway to not only get continually together as many nurses engaged as possible um, at the UN. Uh, it is also about uh, having uh, developing a framework, frankly, for our school and how we live out this relationship uh, that you have uh, been so instrumental. And in. that doctoral student, Casey Belgard, presented earlier in the week, and she's also presenting at the next session that I'll be moderating. So it's a very exciting collaboration with Teddy Potter, who's um, supporting her, and her very quick integration into civil society here at the UN. Yes, thank you, Holly. Are there other panel members that wanted to respond? Water, sanitation, clean air, food. Hi, it's Robin. I'd like to just take a, a try to take a comment at or um, a quick see if I could respond to this. In a way, those the topics that were brought up around water, sanitation, clean air, food, all to me overlay very directly with the social determinants of health or the broader perspective of determinants of health. And I think that's a huge initiative that's happening across many, you know, I think across the globe of how do we integrate that kind of data into health data as well, since they're kind of they're right now they're very separated because it just doesn't occur within some of the healthcare, I would say clinical data. Um, and so that's certainly been, I don't have any answers per se, but I know to me that that they overlay quite significantly. And I think that's a really, we talk about the common collective and that's really, I think, a, a, a general collective agreement that, that we all need to be doing this and paying attention to this and trying to find the correct data standards to integrate this data within clinical data 
Um, it's a huge, obviously, undertaking, but I do think that there is alignment with what this um, the question is with the, a lot of those initiatives with regarding to making sure we're trying to integrate. And I would say optimize the data to we to we can bring it together to make some of make it a actionable decisions is what I guess I'm trying to say. Um, I certainly that's a it's a huge like I said a huge undertaking, but I think that there's a lot of um, alignment with that, and I think there's um, some work being done. And it's exciting to think that we can we all have a common collective to move that forward. Um, again, it's it's a a big job, but I think that we're seeing small pockets of it starting to happen. And so if we could keep maybe growing on some of the wins that we've seen and some of the successes, I think that'll continue to move forward. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Any other comments on this question? Well, I'd like to segue then uh, that builds on your comments, um, Holly, and um, and uh, share a few comments about the field of planetary health informatics. And uh, one comment on that is in the School of Nursing at the University of Minnesota, uh, we appointed a director of planetary health. And we did that for many reasons, not only the import of this area, also the commitment to the role of nurses and nursing and full transformation in this area. Also because it is essential in all of our healthcare environments to become aware and also make bold transformations on how we're actually contributing to the unhealthiness of our planet through many things, including um, the consumption of material stuff. And, um, and that also is the case um, that uh, we, we are committed to working with all of you and beyond to bring the attention and the planetary health um, import to increasingly to all people, but particularly we focus on health. Robin or others, did you want to make uh, comments about that? I, I think, Connie, also that nurses, in my experience within the UN system, are the one group of professionals who can best help um, articulate this intersectionality that was mentioned before about these issues and health and well being. And that's another reason why we're celebrating and enhancing the visibility and voice of nurses at the UN who can be leaders in terms of member states, ambassadors, as well as civil society in understanding the complexity and then acting on it. Because as nurses, that's what we do um, in every area of nursing. So having nurses in leadership roles and as exemplars in the UN system, I think is really important in realizing this you know, all of the SDGs. And that's what we're hoping to do here at the UN. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holly. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that as well. And that I think too brings to what we think about as public health nursing is that we're right there, boots on the ground, but then we can also keep that systems level perspective at the same time. Um, so I really appreciate those comments. Yeah, kind of going back to what um, Dean Delaney was saying about planetary health and specifically planetary health informatics and where I see that some of these, uh, you know, correct alignment and integration as well is that not only do we have syndromic surveillance around disease, but also weather patterns and how do we integrate that kind of data potentially maybe for air quality into, you know, forecasting for, you know, pup, you know, making sure people should stay indoors if they have respiratory illness, for example. Those are, I think, to me, examples of planetary health informatics where we're taking so what's happening out in the environment and making that direct connection to what is happening for health and health outcomes. That was just one example, but I certainly see that there's a lot of opportunity for, I would say, the data integration. Um, and Martin, you can probably speak closer to more details of that, but I think that those are all opportunities that we could, where informatics plays a role in health and um, in health outcomes, and how do we then maybe use that for prediction, forecasting, but also maybe looking at um, certainly trends and tracking trends over time, so we're able to then really 
um, kind of again individualize or personalize what's happening um, for um, for individuals, population health wise as well um, as individual health. Yeah, I would just add on top of that actually a charge for the nursing profession and something that you know I've tried to champion since I joined kind of this the uh, you know I haven't joined the profession but I've worked with the profession is uh, you know nurses are are prime candidates as has already been mentioned a few times to kind of lead this charge because they they fully understand the problem as a whole. The, the issue, I think, and this is where my charge for nursing comes in, is that, you know, there are so many um, approaches that are, uh, uh, that are well suited to address these issues, but nursing as a profession hasn't been trained on these. And I'm biased. These are, you know, computational methods. And I think, you know, uh, we used the term vocabulary earlier, but you know, some of these professions really speak a different language, even though we're all speaking, you know, the same language of tongue, like English, for example. But nurses are in a in a perfect position to bridge that gap and to be able to articulate the problem, but also understand, you know, even classes of methods or approaches that are applicable here. So it's it's almost like nursing, you know, when it comes to planetary health, taking a global view or a system view, it should also be done from a methodological perspective. They should be um, well-versed and articulate in many of the methods that could really change health at across the spectrum from an individual to a global level. And, you know, I try to do that. We try to do that. Other schools try to incorporate that into curriculum. And I think that's that's paramount. Otherwise, it'll be a missed opportunity for the profession, and uh, they'll be told what to do versus uh, driving what should be done. Martin, thank you very much for your comments, and you've you've touched on an area that um, Holly, if I might offer up, um, the the really call for deep examination of how we educate. In this case, I'm just going to say nurses and healthcare persons. Um, another question's come in that I'd like to pose to the panel, and then I know we're getting close to time, so we will talk about um, follow-ups that you can anticipate. But the question is, how could nursing research and scholarship play a role to improve industrial products and reduce waste? And if you choose, you might focus in on the breadth of what healthcare, whether it is occurring in the community and health systems, clinics, et cetera, um, to think about that question. How could nursing research play a role to improve the industrial products and reduce waste? Very directly related to the SDGs. Honey, um I, the next session that I'm going to be moderating is sponsored by uh, ICN and Sanciel, which is the Society of Nurse Scientists, Innovators, Entrepreneurs, and Leaders. And rather than looking at a systems approach right now, I want to just applaud the effort of individuals because nurses have so much experience and knowledge, as well as creativity and developing innovative, effective ideas. And I think that there needs to be places for those individuals. This morning, there was a session that featured a group called Black Girls Code. And there was a 15 year old who won a NASA first place award because she invented a methodology and equipment to remove microplastics from water. This is a 15 year old girl. She was joined by another 15 year old and a 13 year old. So individuals can accomplish enormously effective modalities on their own in partnership. But I think we need to emphasize the role of the individual as a global citizen, um, developing some of these solutions that are really important and there are organizations to support that as well. The, the Science, Technology and Innovation Conference in May at the UN 
will also feature some of those organizational efforts, but also individual efforts. And nurses are among the most talented in this area. Thank you so much, Holly. And your comments remind me that we have a bold dissemination mechanism set up, not only with this panel and the REACH, but more broadly. Um, as, to make all of these phenomenal opportunities, um, um, avail um, knowledge of them available. Hanye. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, actually, at the AMIA summit, we had a keynote speaker who talked about exactly this topic. So he she kind of um, introduced, um, no, asking us to introduce outcome indicator for our research, such as, you know, um, in a research, you, you think about how much carbon dioxide you are reducing it or you're producing it, you know. So, I mean, we never thought about um, that kind of indicator in our nursing research, but when she um, talked about this topic, you know, I, oh, this is the way we should go, I thought. <laughs> so maybe we need to really think about uh, outcome indicators for our nursing research covering this area. Alan, Alan, were you, did you hear her, uh, her speech? <laughs> your question is just, <laughs> you're covering exactly the same topic she mentioned. <laughs> Again, connections and um, the coalescence of where our, um, if I might say, attention and energy are going to actually make change. Yeah, thanks, Anie. Well, I know we're coming close now. I'd like to uh, share a few comments. One, um, thank you to everyone that has attended today. Uh, we will be sending an email. It will probably come next week. It will come with a link to a recording of the presentation, more, uh, more about our panelists and additional informatics resources. So expect that um, sometime next week. I also would like to specifically thank our panelists. Edwin, it's wonderful you were able to be here. Ernesto, Hane, Selda, Marve. To the University of Minnesota presenters, Robin, Dorcas, Martin, Christy, Jenna, Priya, we say thank you so much. And I want to thank the um, exceptional people that work together to support um, this Zoom being available. Holly, thank you for your information. And I particularly want to lift up uh, Steve Rudolph, Tom Steffes, Colleen uh, Haas for all of your um, support work, and Midori, who is our exceptional um, administrative um, support for the Densford International Center for Nursing Leadership. And I'd like to um, conclude with recognizing, as I did in the beginning, the five member directorate of the Densford Center. Holly, thank you. Teddy Potter, Shirley Brecken, uh, Vincent Peters, and Siobhan McMahon. Thank you all for joining us today. And I know there'll be more connections and actions following this. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.